Hello, I'm Bert Oliver and welcome to this week's Buoy News and Views. And our my partner co-host here is going to introduce our guest, Mr. Rouse. I don't think I've met them. <laughs> uh, it's a pleasure to welcome again the regulars here on the show from time to time. I, uh, John Nesky, the assistant chief of police. The reason I am, have him on is because uh, he's balder than I am. <laughs> and of course, Chief Catherine Perez, who is not bald at all. Thank God. But it's, it's hey, great hey, to have you hey, back. Hey, hey. Isn't that awful? Yes, yes. There were discrimination charges uh, involved with picking up bald people. We'll get together after the okay, show. Okay, we, we will. <laughs> um, it's been a while since we've had you on. And of course, uh, we discussed earlier, I wanted to mention the sad death of, of uh, Tommy Jensen, yes. who was killed. He was en route to incident, lost control of the car, died in the hospital recently, just recently married and single, the only son. And uh, it, It's just, just horrible and I'm sure you people feel exactly the same way. Absolutely. Our hearts and prayers go out to the Jensen family. Well, John, you know, that's a toughie to start a program <coughs> with. And, uh, well, it, it, yeah, it we, is, but these people well, we give, put, lay their lives on the line for us. As I was going to say, what it amounted to really is he reflects what everything you see in every police officer, mm -hmm. from what I understand about his life and his response to a call. Yeah. Uh, these are the most important things about, I think, your job is you don't get a choice whether, well, I'm not going to make that call today like a person in business might. I'm going to cancel it. I'm going to not call him. But you can't do it. So he, to me, that was the impression I got from the story. Yeah. Where it happened, when it happened, <clears throat> on Route 1 there in College Park. So what we'd like to do, I believe, John, is to, uh, Catherine uh, gave an update to the city council and, uh, most recently. And anything you'd like to tell us that might be add to that, or uh, I know the response time was talked about at the time. Crime going up or down. Yeah. So give us some information that might be helpful to our viewers. Well, uh, our, our response times continue <coughs> to be phenomenal. Um, we're, for non-priority calls, we're still under five minutes. Uh, I must say that uh, February was not that. It was about double that because of the snow. Oh, yeah. So that's definitely understandable. Did he go uh, out in the car or during the snow? Absolutely. <laughs> really? Yes, absolutely. We wow. all did. I we, actually left the office. I mean, holy we wrote we, it down and everything. <laughs> We, uh, we did what we had to do, and that was, that was something that uh, citizens uh, should probably know, is that we all, during you know, situations like that, we all get involved. You know, we all go to calls for service. No matter what is on your shoulders, you have a responsibility. You don't get to say no. You, you know, people right. depend on you. Right. And that's, you know, that is reflected in the response time that uh, buoy officers are going to be there when you need them. Um, and our calls for service in 2009 went up substantially, over 3,000 calls. Really? Yes. Hmm. And this is well, what kind of an increase is that over the previous year? Uh, it's three, I mean it's three. It's 24. Uh, you know what? We had 27. It's about 20. About 3,000. Yeah, 27,589 for um, 2009. The end of 2009, and we had 24,697 for the entire year. So, it's an incredible increase. But I'm okay with that. Uh, okay. Our numbers stay the same. Our response times stay the same. Um, what's interesting about that is this is something that I that we we talked about when the police department first began because um, I think some people would think well the police department comes and it's safer and people and calls for service will go down so you won't need right. the officers. Well, that's the opposite of what happens. Yeah. You start building that that relationship mm -hmm. between the police department and the citizens, and they will call you. They and they call. hadn't been. It, right. And, they, yeah. and one of the things is the expectation. Uh, you know, is, is it worth my time to call? You know, whereas maybe it would have taken a couple of hours um, due to the, the amount of time that, the, you know, the county was pulled in other directions when right. they were here. We, we don't go anywhere. We're here in Bowie, and we're going to answer your call for service. So now people do call if their shed is broken into or, or some other what may have to some people thought to be a minor incident, sure. they are calling. So the calls for service, and part of that 3,000 um, increase is officer-initiated calls. So that's a big difference. What does that mean? Uh, uh, traffic stops oh, that okay. officers do. Uh, we had over 3,100 
uh, moving violations given in 2009. I know that's one of the major things that people talk about here yeah. in Bowie is speed enforcement and just traffic oh, yeah. enforcement, yeah. period. So to uh, to have that kind of number as well, that, that also tells you that the officers are out there making those types of calls, stopping people that uh, look suspicious and are maybe doing something that just doesn't look right in a particular neighborhood. People are calling us for that. Officers are seeing that. There are more of us doing that. So uh, it, it's, it's okay. definitely right on pace. What is to the what force of strength up to now? 48. 48? No, excuse me, 47. 47. 47. Ultimately 70-something? Uh, 57 is the number 57. that we, we started with, okay. and, and we're still look, trying to grow to that number. Okay. You think, uh, Catherine, maybe the reduction in income to the city might reduce or hold that number where you are now, or do you think they're going to go ahead and fulfill the plan? Well, we're right now we're in, in uh, budget preparation right now, mm -hmm. and the council will tell us what you know what the next year will look like for us as far as the implementation plan for the police department we're 10 officers away from uh, getting reaching the 57 mm -hmm. uh, number so we'll see I that hasn't been finalized yet so if if you were not able to move along to the 57 this <coughs> year what kind of adjustments would you have to make I mean how important is it that we the 57 was based on shift changes days night, et cetera, I understand. It's complicated and it's hard work to get it done. So that was to fulfill what we felt like, and you felt like we needed in Bowie for a safer community. So I'm a little worried about the budget reduction and you know, they're going to move along with that to fulfill the plan, not just the numbers. Well, the plan is a five-year plan and we're not, we, we're not there Wonderful. in five years. We're, we're in three years into it, so we have two more years to get to 57. Mm -hmm. So we still have, oh, yeah. uh, you know, a couple of years to go. And r the reality is that we, we can't, we really shouldn't be at 57 in the, in the facilities that we have because we're overcrowded at this point. Um, the one thing that I'm really clear about is that whatever we take on in the next steps, we do it right. Every, you know, make sure that we're going to do something, we're mm -hmm. going to do it 100% and that's the same thing as we grow. Uh, as we grow, we are going to take on additional responsibilities. One of the next steps for us will be an investigative unit, yeah, follow up on crime. That so um, that really needs some space, yeah. and we don't have that yet. So as we move into this next phase... Well, you will in the new city hall. Absolutely, <clears throat> absolutely. So that will, be, that will be our next step, and we really can't go into that mm -hmm. until we are in a place where they can actually, you know, interview people and, right. and have the, the kinds of equipment, the, the technology to, to be able to track down leads and things will like that. Will you have that. some detectives as well? We will once we get into the uh, new building, okay. absolutely. And so. you'll, of course, have a sauna for yourself. Oh, not quite. <laughs> but, uh, but I am not one to complain. The building is going to be beautiful. Yeah. I, I, I can't wait. I get giddy when I look at the plans. It's and you don't get giddy very often. I don't, no. but uh, it's it's an exciting thing when you actually see where we, you know, where if you think oh, about sure. where we start. Yeah. I go over to the to the the site and I look at you know look at how far they're coming every week, mm -hmm. and it's exciting. And it's we, good for morale too to it be is. in that facility, a real facility. Yeah, very much so. It will make a difference. Absolutely. Uh, even educators found that with their portable. Classrooms seem yeah, to be yeah. a difference in the teacher's attitude. Well, that's so the that. ultimate portable classroom <laughs> out there. <laughs> yes, that's, yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> that might be good. good Irma being around. the principal. Yes. She doesn't <laughs> let any nonsense happen. Mm -hmm. you know, let me ask you a couple of things. And I don't, I hate to bring this word hotspots up, but noticing in the newspaper and the reporting of incidents, it seemed to be certain areas that had this many on line and paper there is this, which is expected, I guess. But if you, uh, and I noticed a lot more of your activity as a result of some of those addresses it had. And I'm not going to point out hot spots, so forgive me for that. Mm -hmm. It's just where activity generally is, uh, has a greater potential. Criminal activity you're talking about. Well, right?